Hey guys. Okay, so today I thought I'd kind of shake things up a little bit. And instead of coming to you from my car between meetings, I would instead jump behind the computer so that I can share a tool with you. Now this tool, it's been around for probably a few years now, probably actually longer now that I think about it, but it underwent a major overhaul, probably about six or 12 months ago. Don't quote me on it. Let's just say in more recent sort of times. And I find there's a lot of people out there that don't quite appreciate the power of this tool and what it can do for them. So I thought, hey, why don't I use this week's video to either introduce or reintroduce you to the power of this tool. So what is this tool that I keep talking about? Well, quite simply, it is Brisbane City Council's free flood awareness tool. Now bear with me. I know there's a lot of people who are going to be like, oh, that old thing. Or they're going to sit there and go, oh, not another flooding tool. Like we've got so many out there already. Trust me, this thing is actually worth your while. So what do I think or why do I think it's worth your while? I think there's a bucket load of reasons out there, many of which I probably don't even appreciate myself yet. But the two key things I want to talk about in today's video, first and foremost, it provides the information in a really, really simplified, easy to understand format. So it totally removes all of the jargon, well no, I shouldn't say all of the jargon, a lot of the jargon that you see in things like the Floodwise Property Report and all of that sort of stuff. So instead of using terminology like 1% AEP or 2% AEP, AEP being annual exceedance probability, it uses likelihood terminology. So things like high likelihood, low likelihood, all of that sort of stuff. Stuff that the average person without any exposure to this industry will understand. Also, possibly more importantly from my perspective, it includes the historical flood data. So the 1980, 1974, let me get my numbers out there, 1974, 2011, and 2022 flood data. So it actually provides a more full picture of what's happening on a property because I've seen so many sites in the last 12 months, well, over 12 months now, since the February 2022 flood event, which were actually impacted more by that flood event in practical terms than the actual flood mapping suggested in council system. So yeah, it gives you a more well-rounded picture, but I'll get to that in more detail soon. Firstly, let's jump behind the computer and let me show you how to access this tool. Okay, so to access the Brisbane City Council's flood awareness map, you quite simply go to Google and type in BCC flood awareness. Then you wanna click on the first link that appears. Once it's loaded, you come down here to access flood awareness map. Again, wait for it to load, have a read of the terms and conditions, and if you agree, click accept terms and continue. Then you wanna come down here to, I wanna search the flood awareness map. Have a bit of read of the information, watch the video if you like, and then click on the X at the top. That is quite simply how you access Brisbane City Council's flood awareness map. Now that I've shown you how to access it, let's dive a little bit deeper into those two key benefits that I talked about at the beginning of this video. First and foremost, I said it prevents, presents, oh, let me get my words out, I need coffee this morning. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it presents the information in a really easily understood format. So the old way of doing it, I guess, if you want to call it that, is to go to Brisbane City Council's interactive mapping and to turn on one by one the various different layers. However, this new system, if you want to call it that, overlays those layers one on top of each other in a single screen. So you can zoom in and essentially wherever the blue goes to is theoretically inundated in a flood event. The darker the blue, the deeper the water. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now, if you were to come across to and do an individual property search, and I'm gonna blur the details out for this property for privacy reasons, but if you search for a particular property, what you'll find is this little window pops up over here and it breaks it down for you. So it says river flooding in this instance, unlikely. Creek flooding, high likelihood. So likelihood is terms that everyone, every man and his dog is gonna understand. Understand in comparison to the Floodwise Property Report, which is this thing here. So this is the current or old way of doing it. I'm gonna keep using those terms, but the old way of doing it. You look at it, it's a whole heap of colors, numbers, like it doesn't make sense to someone outside of the industry. Whereas again, go back to this, unlikely, high likelihood, that is terminology that people will understand. So that's the first key benefit. More importantly though, I wanna talk about the historical flooding. So you'll see I've searched Deegan here because we've had quite a few examples of this happening in Deegan recently, and I've turned on the February 2022 flood event. Now, if I get rid of that legend, what you'll see is there's quite a few situations or properties which are not covered by blue, but they are covered by pink. So this means that they weren't anticipated to flood last year, but they did flood last year. So you can imagine a scenario here, any of these properties where you're seeing only pink, 
in theory someone could design a property or design a house which is slab on ground because you don't actually trigger the flood overlay code and therefore the undercroft requirements the minimum habitable non-habitable floor level requirements all of that sort of stuff so yeah, someone could come along do a search on any of these pink properties and go oh happy days no flooding to can worry about go and design the house make it all the way through the planning and the building certification phases without any issues build the house on slab on ground and if it had been last year it would have gone under so the point i'm trying to make here is don't just rely on the overlay mapping come to this system to get that more well-rounded sort of big picture idea of what's happening in a property so that you can not only design to suit the requirements the minimum requirements but you can also design a house that's going to be future proof to a degree now i do say to a degree because the big thing i want to make or big point i want to make here is yes council is constantly updating its mapping so i do anticipate in the foreseeable future these blue areas especially in Deegan and that sort of thing will be expanded to cover some of the pink areas so yes their flood overlay mapping will be updated to cover those known or the areas that they knew or now know would be inundated etc etc however that said it is still not a hundred percent fail safe sort of thing like it's just best predicted outcome it's not 100 percent guaranteed outcome so for example you could have a property over here which is not covered by any of the blue or the pink mapping don't get too excited don't sit here and go sweet never ever am i going to see flooding at the end of the day climate change let's be honest these blue areas are going to expand and the pink area is going to expand in the future or whatever color the next flood event gets allocated it's going to expand so you can kind of say hey there's a very low chance i'm going to flood but you can't guarantee you're never going to flood so keep that in mind this is only one tool that you can use to help inform the design it can't guarantee that you're never going to get flooding etc etc okay i think that covers off everything i want to talk about today as i always say until next time thanks for watching for all you red tape lovers out there, I have one thing to say. Well, no, actually, I've got three. Number one, the advice provided in these videos is general in nature. It's not site specific. You would be a silly billy to go and make financial decisions based on this advice without first checking with the town planner. Don't be a silly billy. Number two, Brisbane Town Planning is in no way linked to Brisbane City Council. The views expressed in these videos are my own, not council's. So if you don't like them, blame me, not council. Number three, what was my number three? Oh yeah, the views expressed in these videos are accurate at the time of recording. If you're watching this video back 10 years from now, the views may not be so accurate. That's all.